Okay, everyone. So today I'm going to be answering the question, which programming language should you use for coding interviews? So this topic has been coming up a lot in my live streams and even had someone at a party asking me or like bringing up the discussion of they're using Java and they wanted to, they're thinking of switching to Python. Honestly, this, this conversation has been going on for probably five, six years, even since I was in school. People are trying to figure out what is the best programming language to use for coding interviews. So having done a ton of these coding interviews myself and also conducting it on my YouTube, I want to like give my two cents on this topic. So I actually just ran a poll on my channel and I had 571 votes, which is pretty much a lot of, which is a pretty big amount of people. But I asked what pro programming language do you usually use in your DSA coding interviews? And like I expected, Python is the most commonly used programming language. So you see we have 59% of people using Python. So out of the 571 people, that's 337. For Java, 17%, so not about 97 people who submitted it to the poll. Then 18% C++. So it looks like this is kind of based on my historical data of me conducting these interviews in real life. I do notice it's a lot more Python for sure. Most candidates just use Python. Then for sure C++ and then close follow is Java. And then other things like JavaScript, TypeScript, JavaScript. Some people insist on using TypeScript, even though I tell them you could just use JavaScript to avoid having to type and move faster because a lot of these interviews is multiple parts to it. And we want to see your algorithmic skills versus being able to type. So yeah, pretty much Python, C++, Java with like the gap between Python and, and the other languages is a lot. So yeah, this is very, this is what I see in my interviews. Python is the very most common. Um, wasn't surprised by this. Honestly, living in the Bay Area, most people actually just use Python. I had a, a lot of my viewers actually come from India. I have 34% of my, my viewers from India. So I think Java and C++ are very, are more common there, but doing interviews in the Bay, I think it's much larger than 59%. So in Silicon Valley, more people, I would probably say this is about 70% or 75% of people are using Python. But since I have global subscribers, these, these other languages are, are getting a little bit more love. So let's get into what, what is, which programming language should you use? And there's no exact answer to this. What I'll say is use the programming language that has these data structures in the standard library, sets, queues, and heaps. You don't want to be using a, um, a data structure or sorry, a programming language that doesn't have these data structures because heaps, for example, are very common in coding interviews and you don't want to have to whip up a heap from scratch in an interview. Some interviews would actually make you do that back in the days. I don't know if things changed, but I just use Python. So Python has heaps built in, it has sets, it has queues. So you want to use these data structures. JavaScript, for example, doesn't actually really have queues. Queues as in O of one shifting from the front. Because if you look at the shift operation, it's actually O of N, right? It's actually O of N. So JavaScript is kind of, if you don't even have queues, you can't even do a breath, breath first search, right? And then that's very common. If and they ask you any shortest path question, it might involve a queue, it might involve a heap, depending on if the edges have weights. So have, I would say a lot, most programming languages straight up just have sets. I've never seen one that hasn't. So I would say queues and heaps, ask yourself, does this programming language have queues and heaps? Otherwise you're gonna be stuck in an interview there. They're gonna ask you, um, like a top K question or a Dijkstra's and all of a sudden you don't have a heap. So 
yeah, use a programming language with these data structures built in. Python and Java do have these. And next is use a programming language you are most comfortable with. So people think that they're comfortable with a language and then they see a language error or they see an error on the console and then they take 10, 15 minutes to debug that error in the console. So what I mean by being able, comfortable with your programming language is first off, be able to solve the language errors really fast. If you see syntax highlighting, if things are not being typed properly, if you're using TypeScript, you're using Java, be able to resolve those language errors or type errors really fast. That's what people who are comfortable with a language are able to do. Be able to understand the standard libraries and the standard functions. You don't be able to write full algorithms without ever having to look at the documentation. That, that would be the goal for interviews. And be able to debug stack traces in your programming language. So many engineers I've seen, they'll see the stack trace and they'll take them. The stack trace is very clear on what the error is, but it'll still take them a lot of time to debug it. Maybe because they're not comfortable with the language. Maybe they didn't even use the language in production. Maybe they've never solved the on-call bug with that language. So it's hard for them to f look at a stack trace and figure out how to debug the error from a stack trace. So I would say, let me write these down. Language, this means being able to solve the language really fast. Be able, be able to know the standard library really well. And then be able to, be able to debug the stack trace. I've had candidates who they see the stack trace. The stack trace is kind of very clear. And then they will kind of say, oh, the stack trace sucks for this language, or the stack trace is not helpful. But like, why are you, don't use a programming language where you think the stack trace sucks or it's not helpful for debugging. There's languages that can help you. Honestly, Python one is really clear. People have complained about Python stack trace. I've never had problem with Python stack trace. It's kind of clear to me. So, um, standard library on it. Yeah, just, this is what it means to be comfortable with a programming language. Not that, oh, uh, comfortable doesn't mean, oh, I just know the syntax of building array and stuff. It means solve the language errors really fast, know the standard library in the back of your head essentially, and be able to debug a stack trace. So all this stuff is stuff you learn by doing problems and working through type errors, um, doing enough problems where you kind of uh, force yourself to not look at the documentation and only look at it if you need and memorize the documentation. And ones where you have to struggle through track trace, stack traces, maybe on-call issues or whatever, like languages you've actually had to use maybe in production or you've done, grinded maybe two, 300 bleed code questions using that language. So that's my advice on which programming language to use. My recommendation, my unsolicited recommendation is use Python, right? It has the least language specific errors and it allows you to just focus on actually writing the algorithm and not having to worry about the language specific errors. So another thing is it also has all the relevant data structures in the standard library. It has heaps, it has queues, it has sets. It has a really nice interface for all of those as well. So it has tuples. I, I just thought Java doesn't, you have to, uh, they, they took away the pair. So I had a candidate was doing some other, had to do some other hack, hack or you have to implement pair by yourself. So honestly, I would just use Python as the most simple language. It's also a language that's growing. It's being used in a lot of AI stuff. So Python is still a growing language. A lot of people are using it. A lot of people are, it's their first language. So it's still a big community using Python. And yeah, I use Python. It's from my experience of running a hundred of these and cracking Fang, it's definitely been the best language for me to learn because Pretend you're going to grind 100 lead code questions. If you use Python or if you use Java and it takes you 20% longer to solve the question because you have to deal with some of the other stuff, it's more verbose. If you're grinding 100 questions, maybe it takes you 100 hours. 
you're spending 20 extra hours on stuff like the language specific stuff and what a, a lot of people should know is sol solving these lead code questions getting a job or cracking fang or being able to get good at lead code is a lot on breadth over depth like learning a lot of different algorithms and just doing a lot of different questions seeing a lot of different things to prepare yourself for the coding interview you don't want to completely just dive into one algorithm or one topic and disregard the rest you need to have a wide array of understanding because they'll just you need to be able to answer any question on the spot so you need to cycle through as many questions as possible and python pretty much allows you to do that you just have to focus on the algorithm and nothing about the language and yeah honestly i've done a lot of also like typed languages in my jobs and like a lot of time that that's not really the hard part the hard part is really getting down on the algorithm so from my experience yeah so also one thing is i did use java back in the days i did that's a language i did in my internships that's a language i this is the first programming language i learned um i did a lot of projects in java but doing coding interviews i just straight up just switched to python i just it just felt a lot faster it felt especially when you're just starting and you just can't wrap your head around the algorithm that you're working on or the trick that you're trying to learn and all of a sudden java's giving you type errors it just makes you want to pull out your hair so my recommendation use python shout out to whoever's using it right now um, if you're using java honestly you should be able to switch pretty easy but if you're already really comfortable in it, as in you can solve the language errors really fast, you know the standard library, you are able to debug the stack trace, don't switch. But this is just my advice, my recommendation. Um, yeah, which program language you should use for coding interviews. I would say Python, but open to debate. Everyone comment down below. This is 2025, so things might change when you go watch this the next time. But state of state state of the union right now, state of the coding world is most people are using Python or a good amount of people, especially in the Bay Area. So, yeah, hope you have a good rest of the day. See you in the next video.